Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the Hilltop Pillbox here in Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. And we are playing a game of D-Day. Yes, I actually have one of the crickets. Well, it's obviously a remanufactured one from uh, the D-Day for the paratroopers that came in with the 82nd and 101st. They had crickets and it was, uh, you do one. If you thought you heard something and then somebody would reply with two and that would mean that it's a friend. So I was able to pick one of those up at uh, uh, Omaha Beach. There's a, a, a fantastic museum nearby. So I got to pick up a uh, pick up a cricket among a, some other um, paraphernalia. So uh, really a, a great trip I had a couple of years ago with my wife for our 25th anniversary. Uh, but here we are with the Avalon Hill offering of D-Day, and we're all set up, and I'm going to just throw caution to the wind, and I'm going to use the fortune cards as well as the tactic cards just to spice up the game a little bit. I really am not a fan of the fortune ones. They're just, if the dice start getting hot for one side, it's it's pretty much game over. And uh, tactic cards aren't quite, uh, in, in my experience anyway, I haven't been quite as uh, positive or negative. Uh, but the game itself, I think, is fairly well balanced. I think out of the out-of-box rules uh, are a little axis favored. There are 10 turns. And by the end of the 10 turns, actually by the end of the 9 turns, <laughs> the Allies have to capture Cherbourg, Saint-Lô, and Caen. And if they do that and hold them, and no Germans are present at the end of round 10, then the Allies win. But the Allies have to hold it for a whole turn, which means they have to take them by round 9. So we have always played uh, round 10. If the Allies can do it in round 10, that's good enough for us. Um, and we're at about a 50-50. Uh, Allies um, and Germans splitting the win. So if you can let me know on your end of things, uh, what your experience is, that would be great. But without any further ado, we are going to get going. We've got our reinforcement boards all set up for the British and the Americans, and of course, the vaunted Wehrmacht. All right. Oh, and the one thing I was going to mention was that the game I designed and had a lot of help with playtesting and some tweaks here and there from uh, Mike Kelly, Doug Friend, uh, Hambone, um, Sky Marshal, Triple Crown, uh, G.I. Joe, Mark the Shark. Um, just a lot of a lot of help from those guys doing some playtesting. And that game, Operation Normandy, uh, will be available from Historical Board Gaming very shortly, probably within the next month. And uh, I tell you folks, I'm uh, really proud of that uh, game. I think it's a fantastic balance of historical accuracy little bit of chance, um, but also you are at the helm. You control a lot of what goes on. And there's a cost-benefit analysis to everything you do. And uh, for me, that's what I always go for in games. I, I'm not a big fan of the, um, you know, the, the game-breaking rule or option uh, or the whole thing where, well, you've got to do this attack on round one or else you'll lose. Or if somebody does this attack on round one, they'll probably win. You know, it's 80% chance they'll win. And I'm like, mm, then the game's kind of playing you, right? Well, not so much in Operation Normandy. Uh, it's very much uh, based on the commanders on each side. There are so many decisions that are in your hands, not in the game's hand. And uh, you are able to really decide your fate. But without any further ado, let's see what happens here in the first turn of the... Axis and Allies D-Day. Okay, round one or turn one is over and this is what the board is looking like right now. Not a lot of success for the Allies except here on Utah. Uh, the, the tactics card that prevents, or maybe it's a fortune card, that prevents the uh, Allies from landing at more than one spot for each nation happened. So I could only land in one spot and decided to land here and it did draw a lot of stuff off of Omaha so there's that um, 
So we landed there, didn't even try to land there. Uh, this is wide open, so I figured it's not a big deal, we'll get on there sometime. And I couldn't come on here. So fortunately the Germans, a uh, little bit anemic there on their attacks. But uh, here are the, the deaths from the first round. As you can see, the, the British have lost a lot of stuff. They've already lost a couple of tanks, uh, of which they do not have many. They only have, uh, I think, eight in the whole game. And they've already lost a quarter of those. So, yeah, it makes things a little tough over in the Khan sector. Uh, no planes were shot down, though. So that is always good. So we're going to head on to... Turn two, and uh, hoping to uh, kind of pick it up a little bit here for the Allies, because after turn one, I don't have much going on here. So they need some help, but here we go. Well, that was one of the weirdest rounds I have ever played. So we're just going to head over the map here and let you see what we got. The Americans have pushed up the Cotentin Peninsula here on the coast, and they're headed for Cherbourg. The Germans were able to dispatch the remaining airborne and have coagulated a few troops here. But the Allies have landed in force on Omaha, but we're still kind of stuck here on gold. Juno is okay, and Sword is wide open. The Germans actually got absolutely hammered by air power and other such things. They just could not get anything going, and the bombardments... Uh, to take out the blockhouses, clean this whole area up. So that was fairly easy. So the British are definitely uh, entrenched. Here's their reinforcements, which I put on the map and then set up the Americans, but forgot to set up the British, so I'll do that off camera. So the Germans came in here. This is the only place where there was no fighters. And you can see they have not been rolling well. This is after two turns. So uh, this last turn, they rolled a grand total of eight, five on the west and three in the east. So this is what we've got. We've got these eight units, and uh, we're probably going to be placing fighters in such a way as to bottle them up. So uh, probably put a couple fighters over these guys again. And uh, yeah, things are, things are looking very uh, bleak for the Germans. If they continue to roll threes and fives and whatnot, they won't even get all of their reinforcements on. So having said that, they'll probably roll like a 12. The British, on the other hand, are not having those sorts of problems. They're almost done. And the Americans are fairly much uh, typical for this game. So that's where we are right now. Again, no aircraft have been lost. And things are looking pretty good for the Allies. Round three and... Oh, Pretty tough times for the Germans. Okay, well, some big reinforcements for a couple of the players on this one, but we'll show you where we're at. You can see the Cherbourg is now effectively under siege, but only by infantry, so not much of a threat there. A couple of artillery pieces. A couple of tanks have made it ashore here for the Americans, but really not likely to survive unless we can get these reinforcements uh, up here and start rolling a little bit better for the Americans and could not get rid of this blockhouse unfortunately even in defense and uh, so that means these poor fellows aren't going to be able to move on to the beach this turn and the British again continue, con continue to consolidate their territory here on the beaches not a lot of pushback yet but here it comes so the Germans uh, decided to roll pretty well here. So they rolled a 12. So we got eight units there and four units here. And uh, these guys are all ready to go and defend Saint Lo. I neglected to put my fighters back, so don't worry about that. We'll be moving them. Again, we haven't lost a single aircraft. And uh, knocking on, I don't know, whatever this stuff is here, plastic of some kind. Uh, but we, we shall see here in round four, might have to take some more risks, uh, now that the Germans are getting a lot more bodies, but the, the downside for the Germans of taking this long to get their, uh, infantry and artillery and whatnot onto the game board is that the infantry will just be attacking at a one 
and they defend at a two, whereas the British now are defending at a two instead of attacking at a one, because they, they have no interest in this territory, right? They just want to hang on to the city, so it will be interesting. The British are down to three units coming onto the beaches, so they what you see is what you got, pretty much. Uh, the Americans only have about uh, 10 pieces left to come on, so what you see is what you got. And the Germans have a lot more stuff to come on, so if they keep rolling well, uh, that might turn the tide. But uh, as it stands, we're too early in the game to call it. That 12 really did change the, the map quite a bit, and then a 12 and I think an 8 was rolled by the Western uh, Germans, so... West Germany? I don't know. That doesn't happen for a few years. But hey, that'll be a Cold War variant of D-Day. Is that possible? Inconceivable! Yeah, probably not. Okay, here we go, folks. We're going on to turn four. Turn five is about to happen, and a really devastating fortune card came up that said I had to roll to get my fighters into the game, and uh, yeah... I got one out of eight that could actually fly patrol, so the Germans were able to move about much more easily here in the southern part of the map. We'll show you in just a moment. It's really clogging up here on Utah Beach. Uh, Omaha is finally free to break out. They got rid of that blockhouse, and now they're going to be heading south towards San Lo. The British again. Uh, all their stuff is now on the board. They've got nothing left on the reinforcement charts. The Germans are quickly uh, clearing out <laughs> a bunch of their stuff as well. They've rolled very well for the past couple of rounds. So, uh, yeah, I think the battle will be for saint Lo, possibly Cherbourg, because, again, this is very difficult uh, to do with infantry and maybe a couple of artillery helping out. Just can't seem to get hits over here for some reason. So if I can't get out of there, I can't attack. So. But uh, the Germans, good uh, cluster of troops, material here. They have lost a few tanks to the bombers. In fact, the bombers, I think, have only missed once this game. So that would be a grand total of seven hits, and mostly on tanks. Uh, so that's taken quite a toll on the Panzer divisions. But again, they rolled really well, and they are going to be bringing more and are going to be likely coming into Khan and trying to wrest control of that away from the British and Canadians. Time will tell if they are successful, and hopefully we don't get any more cards that really stymie. These, these cards, ah, they're entertaining, but wow, the stuff that they can do, uh, just unbelievable, unbelievable uh, game-tilting stuff. So, But hey, we'll keep playing with them and just see how it goes. Turn five, coming up. All right, halfway through the game, and the British got a little reprieve. The last uh, uh, tactics card said that you can roll to get some British troops back on the board, so we did that. I think I forgot to do that a while ago, so we did it now. So now they're going to have nine guys uh, coming onto the beach here to help Khan, but Khan really defended herself well, and the Air Force that was in Khan took out nine units trying to get in. Oh, come on! So the Germans only got to attack with four, and three of them were killed by the defense of the British, who lost only two infantry. A little bit of German stuff left here, nothing left on the Eastern Front, so Khan is not really that... Uh, easy of a target at this point. So you can see the Germans are converging around saint Lo, and uh, you can also see that's where the British and the Americans uh, seem to be headed as well. Up here, Cherbourg, still under siege. I don't want to attack it uh, until I get some tanks going here. So <laughs> we're, we're still waiting to get ashore. This has just been an absolute quagmire, and if the... Uh, allies can't break through soon, I might have to resort to just using waves of infantry, which we know how well that goes in warfare, in modern warfare, that is. So that's the end of round five, halfway through the game. So turn six coming up, and you can see the light is shining on Omaha. Hmm, is that a good thing or a bad thing? 
Heading on to turn seven, and all of the units are now on the board for everybody. And you can see that the light has shifted from Omaha to Utah. But I will show you what's going on over here. It's uh, almost time to go in because now we've cleared Utah Beach completely, and these tanks will be heading up uh, a couple of them anyway. I don't think I'm going to send all of them, but I'll send a couple. And the rest will come south. The Germans put on a good show here and took out uh, five American infantry uh, for the loss of, I think, three of their own. And a real, ugh, this is uh, just a mess. But tough to get through. Unlike this battle here where these eight uh, British units came in and got five hits and there was only four German units there. So that was a clean sweep and they ended up just losing a single infantry. The Germans are a little bottled up here, and as you know, once their stuff is on the board, um, what you see is what you got. So it's not looking real good for Germany right now, but again, if the Allies don't get the hits, and you can't get them out of the city, Germany wins. So, on to turn 7, and uh, we'll show you what it looks like after this, but the Germans... Might have to take a shot at Khan, uh, but they are still so outnumbered here. They've got nine units versus almost double that in that that really close area, and these infantry could come down and help out again. So uh, not looking great for the Germans, but they just need a single unit to stop the victory. Time will tell. Turn eight. Here we go. Is the sun setting on somebody here? Well... We shall see. So Cherbourg is very surrounded now. And the Americans will be heading in uh, with tanks, artillery, and a few men. And hope to dispatch them this round. Saint-Lô, though, has been a little bit less than cooperative. And we have the uh, British uh, tanks uh, heading in. Uh, this tank is in this spot here, trying to help out the Americans. And these artillery here, these 88s, have really been putting up a stink. So uh, these uh, American units here are going to have to head south from Carrington and likely do some heavy slugging. But the British are in numbers here. And the Germans tried to punch through. There was a fighter here that took care of a couple of units. And they didn't roll particularly well, only taking out two units, or two or three maybe, and then losing uh five themselves. They had nine units. So they lost some to the air and some to the counterattack. So it's, uh, yeah, not looking great. Cherbourg, I think, is likely the best chance for the Germans to hold on. Um, time will tell. We'll see where the sun is in just a couple of minutes. These turns go really quickly near the end, so might not have moved too much. And just a little update, something I forgot to mention in the last two rounds. This many planes have been shot down. As the Allies are feeling a little bit confident here, taking a few chances with my my uh, bombers, trying to go after tanks that might have three or four artillery there. Uh, this time there was two artillery, and one of them shot them down. And the fighters, uh, one died this round, one died last. But I don't know if it's enough. It's pretty late in the game. But we'll see. Here we go, on with turn 8. No, it's not deja vu, folks. That's the turn marker. We're not going to bother moving it because there are no more German units on the board. It was utter disaster. They got a grand total of two hits out of the, I think there were, let's see, there were four, well, five units up here. One was lost to a bomber, so that's five. There were four here, that's nine, 11, and then there were four in here, that's 15, and three tanks. So 18 units got two hits. And uh, yeah, so the Allies have pulled off a convincing victory this time, and I think a couple of these tactics cards, uh, or fortune cards, um, and some of the tactics cards actually really, uh, really change the outcome in favor of the Allies. Like, this isn't even close. I have never seen a game this one-sided. So, there you have it, folks. That is the end of D-Day, uh, the Avalon Hill version. And again, the historical board gaming offering 
uh, which is called Operation Normandy, will be available, mm, we're hoping within a few weeks or a month, not too long from now anyway, and it's going to be fantastic. And there's not a ton of specialty units in it, so you can just play with whatever uh, HBG or Axis and Allies pieces you already have. You just need uh, chips and lots of German infantry, uh, but everybody else, it's, yeah, it's a real uh, simple setup. And uh, once you get going, a very uh, just turn-by-turn -turn game, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. It also has 10 rounds in it, not including the initial airborne phase which I developed and I really, really, I think you're going to enjoy that part of it. A lot of chaos and uh, the beach landings as well. They've got some tough slugging to do, but once they get through, it's, uh, it's not exactly, um, you know, open season on the Germans as they will have the punch to come back and make a real game of it. So I hope you are looking forward to that. But for now, signing off on behalf of the Allied Forces here in Normandy, the Hilltop Pillbox, as we always say, hug your loved ones, thank your friends for playing, and may those dice be with you.